What about the Jamal Mr. Downtown Ray Mel? You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Orlando for Thursday, February 2nd, 2023, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and they'll take you to the page. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith have announced in a video they posted on social media that they're reuniting for a fourth Bad Boys action comedy. Smith said, Bad Boys 4 is official. Lawrence agreed, smiling. That's right. The 90-second clip show shows Smith chatting excitedly to the camera about the news he was planning to announce as he drove to Lawrence's house listening to Shake Your Tail Feather from the Bad Boys 2 soundtrack on his stereo. Lawrence's Twitter post has gotten more than 1.6 million views since it was shared on Tuesday. Smith shared the same video on Instagram and got about 500,000 likes. No details about the start of production or additional casting were immediately disclosed. The pair, blockbuster cop comedy Bad Boys, was released in 1995. Hit sequels followed in 2003 and 2020. Tom Brady joined Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda on the red carpet Tuesday. The 45-year-old former professional football player attended the Los Angeles premiere of the film 80 for Brady with Tomlin, Fonda, Rita Moreno, and Sally Field at the Regency Village Theater. 80 for Brady is inspired by the true story of four senior friends, played by Tomlin, Fonda, Moreno, and Field, who traveled to Houston, Texas to watch Brady and the New England Patriots play in Super Bowl 51. Brady appears as himself in the new movie. Brady celebrated his part in the film in an interview with Entertainment Tonight at the premiere. The athlete said, Never in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine that this would be something that I would be doing. I actually had a friend remind me of today. He said, Imagine as a North Cal kid thinking you'd go down for a Hollywood premiere with your name on it. He added, It's really amazing. I've had a lot of great experiences in my life. This is certainly another one. Brady uh, uh, the quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers announced his retirement from the NFL on Wednesday following the premiere. The athlete previously retired in 2022. 80 for Brady is written by Sarah Haskins and Emily Hapern and directed by Kyle Marvin. Paramount Pictures shared a trailer for the film in November. 80 for Brady opens in theaters on Friday ahead of Super Bowl 57. The 2023 Super Bowl will take place February 12th and feature Rihanna as the halftime show's performer. Paramount Plus announced that the Frasier revival began production Wednesday. The first image shows Frasier Crane's airline ticket from Seattle to Boston. Kelsey Grammer returns as Dr. Frasier Crane, first introduced on Cheers as a local Boston area psychiatrist. His spinoff, Frazier, took him to Seattle, where his father, played by the late John Mahoney, and his brother, played by David High Pierce, live. Crane became a radio call-in host on the spinoff. The plot of Crane's journey back to Boston remains under wraps, but the announcement confirmed some new characters and one returning character. Jack Cutmore Scott will play Freddie, Crane's son, with his ex-wife Lilith, now an adult. Nicholas Lindhurst, who will play Alan, a university professor Crane knew in college. Tukes, Olga Gondidoy will play the head of the psychology uh, department. Jess Selguguero will play Fre- Freddy's college roommate. Crane will have a nephew, David, played by Anders Keefe. Grammar first expressed interest in a Frasier revival in 2019. Paramount Plus greenlit the series in 2021. CBS Studios produced Frasier, through, though it aired on NBC. Viacom CBS also owns Paramount Plus. Cheers co-creator and director James Burroughs directed the first two episodes of the Frasier revival. Chris Harris and Joe Cristalli created the revival, and Grammer is also executive producer. Blind Spotting will return for a second season on Stars in April. The network shared a premiere date and first look photos for season two of the comedy drama series Wednesday. Season two will have a two episode premiere April 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Stars, with subsequent episodes to air 
Fridays. Episodes will also be available to stream on the Stars app and streaming platforms. Blind Spotting is co-created by Raphael Casal and David Diggs. The series follows Ashley, played by Jasmine Cephas Jones, a woman whose partner of 12 years, Miles, played by Casal, is suddenly incarcerated, leaving her and their son, Sean, played by Atticus Woodward, to move in with Miles' mother, Rainey, played by Helen Hunt, and sister Trish, played by Jalen Barron. Season 2 picks up nine months after Ashley and Miles' prison nuptials in the Season 1 finale. Ashley struggles to raise Sean on her own while Miles adjusts to life in prison. The official description reads, Rainey is doing her best to make Ashley and Sean feel at home while trying to find a way to stay connected to her son behind bars. But Ashley holds all the cards. Trish's new business is flourishing, but she is dealing with jealousy issues now that her best friend and business partner, Jacques, played by April As- Absence, is dating Cuddle, played by Lance Holloway. Disney Plus is giving a glimpse of The Mandalorian Season 3. The streaming service shared a photo and a featurette for the new season Wednesday. The Mandalorian is a live-action series set in the Star Wars universe. The show follows the bounty hunter Din Djarin, played by Pedro Pascal, a.k.a. Mondo. The poster shows Mondo, played by Pascal, and Gugru, a.k.a. Baby Yoda, on a mission. Season 3 will follow the pair as they continue to journey through the Star Wars galaxy. An official description reads, Once a lone bounty hunter, Din Djarin has reunited with Gogru. Meanwhile, the New Republic struggles to lead the galaxy away from its dark history. The Mandalorian will cross fast with all allies and make new enemies as he and Gogru continue their journey together. The feature titled Phenomenon explores the show's success and Gogru's impact on pop culture. The Mandalorian Season 3 premieres March 1st on Disney+. The streaming service shared a trailer for the season in January. CBS has announced that it's working on a Matlock remake starring Oscar-winning actress Kathy Bates and a spinoff of The Good Fight led by Carrie Preston. Leigh Andy Griffin played the titular criminal defense attorney for nine seasons from 1986 to 1992. The network said in a synopsis for the new version, achieving success in her younger years, Brilliant uh, septuagenarian Mad- Madeline Madlock, played by Bates, rejoins the workforce at a prestigious law firm where she used her un- her unassuming demeanor and willy tactics to win cases and expose corruption from within. Jane the Virgin's Jenny Snyder Ehrman will be an executive producer on the show and writing the pilot for the legal drama. Preston will reprise the role of Elizabeth Tesconi and Elizabeth, the follow-up to The Good Wife, which ran from 2009 to 2016, and The Good Fight, which aired from 2017 to 2022. Franchise creators Robert and Michelle King are writing the script, and Robert is on board to direct the pilot. The two shows are expected to premiere during the 2023-2024 television season. The syndicated talk show Dr. Phil will end its run with its current 21st season. Uh, Phil McGraw said in a statement Tuesday, I have been blessed with over 25 wonderful years in daytime television. With this show, we've helped thousands of guests and millions of viewers through everything from addiction and marriage to mental wellness and raising children. This has been an incredible chapter of my life and career, but while I'm moving on from daytime, there's so much more I wish to do. Reruns are expected to air with occasional new introductions or materials from McGraw, including guest updates. McGraw frequently appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show in the 1990s before he got his own series. This will be the latest long-running daytime program to wrap in a 12-month period, along with the Ellen DeGeneres show, the Wendy Williams show, Maury, Dr. Oz, and The Real. NBC has uh, ordered a third season of its sci-fi drama, La Brea. The show is about what happens when a sinkhole opens up in L.A., dropping dozens of people, buildings, and vehicles into 10,000 B.C. It stars Natalie Zia, Ian Mackin, John Seda, Nicholas Gonzalez, Sheik On Okokwo, Zira Gurecki, Jack Martin, Veronica Sinclair, Rowan Merchadanti, Lily Santiago, and Josh McKenzie. 
Among the time travelers are Eve Harris, played by Zia, and her teenage son Josh, played by Martin. In season one, Eve's estranged former military pilot husband Gavin, played by Mackin, and daughter Izzy, played by Gorecki, try to transport themselves into the past to reunite their family. The second season sees uh, Josh mistakenly teleport to 1988, while Gavin and Izzy made it to Eve's premio timeline, with thousands of miles away from them with no easy mode of transportation in sight. New episodes of Season 2 will be airing on NBC Tuesday nights and become available Wednesday on Peacock. Kylie Jenner is celebrating her daughter Stormy's fifth birthday. The 25-year-old television personality marked the occasion Wednesday by posting a tribute to Stormy on Instagram. Jenner shared a slideshow of photos of Stormy from throughout the years. She captioned, I gave you the gift of life, and life gave me the gift of you. The most, uh, the most special girl, this little face. I will miss it as it, it keeps changing. Five years of loving you and forever more to go. I'll always be there for you, Stormy girl. Jenner has two children, Stormy and son Ari, with her on-again, off-again partner, Tristan, uh, Travis Scott. Jenner's mother, Chris Jenner, also wished Stormy a happy birthday. Uh, Jenner wrote on Instagram, a happy birthday to my beautiful, sweet, smart, funny, adventurous, grand, uh, loving granddaughter, Stormy. I can't believe you are five. You spread happiness and joy wherever you go. And you're also for being a shining bright light in all of our lives. Um, she also added, you are the best daughter, granddaughter, cousin, friend, and big sister. Your brother is so lucky to have you to look up to, and I can't wait to watch you grow as you get older. We are blessed to have your uh, have you in our lives, my precious girl, and I love you to the moon and back. Stormy and I can't wait to celebrate your special day with you. The recording... Academy has announced the presenters for the 2023 Grammy Awards. The 65th annual ceremony will take place Sunday at the Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles and air at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on CBS. First Lady Jill Biden, Cardi B, James Corden, Billy Crystal, Viola Davis, Dwayne Johnson, um, Olivia Rodrigo, and Shania Twain will also be presenting. Former Daily Show host Trevor Noah will host the Grammys for the third consecutive year. Beyonce leads the nominees with nine nominations, including Album of the Year uh, for Renaissance. The singer announced New Words supports that um, Renaissance on Wednesday. Beyonce leads the nominees with nine nominations, including Album of the Year for Renaissance. The singer announced a new world tour in support of Renaissance on Wednesday. Music superstar Beyonce is going on tour in 2023. The 41-year-old singer announced a new world tour for the Renaissance tour on Wednesday. The Renaissance tour will kick off in Europe. And in May, the North American mat, uh, American leg of the trouble began begins on July 8th in Toronto, Ontario, and ends September 27th in New Orleans, Louisiana. The new tour is in support of uh, Beyonce's album cover or album Renaissance release in July. The album features the singles Break My Soul and Cuff It. Ozzy Osbourne is officially retiring from touring. The 74-year-old singer announced in a statement Wednesday that he's canceling his remaining 2023 tour dates and retiring from touring due to health issues. Osbourne injured his spleen in 2019, and it was announced in 2020 that he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. The singer has canceled several shows in the past few years due to, uh, due to health issues. Osborne said on Wednesday, this is probably one of the hardest things I have ever had to share with my loyal fans. As you may know, four years ago this month, I had a major accident where I damaged my spleen. 
He told fans, my only one and only purpose during this time is uh, to get back on stage, uh, make the singing voices, um, my singing voices is fine. However, after three operations, stem cell treatment ends physically, therapy uh, sessions, and most and recently groundbreaking cyber nicks treatment, my body is still physical weak. He told fans Osborne said he is canceling his tour date due to the physical demands of touring. He said, quote, I'm honestly humbled by the way that you've all been patient, held on to me uh, f- for your tickets and for my class. But in a good conscience, I now have to come to the realization that I'm not physically capable of doing of upcoming uh, European uh, UK tour dates. As I knew, I couldn't deal with the traveling. Mm. And finally, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has announced the nominees for its class of 2023. Kate Bush, Cheryl Crow. Missy Elliott, Iron Maiden, Joy Division slash New Order, Cindy Lauper, George Michael, Whitley Nelson, Rage Against the Machine, Soundgarden, The Spinners, A Tribe Called Quest, The White Stripes, and Warren Zevon are, are, are announced for induction this year. Crow, Elliott, Joy Division, New Order, Lauper, Michael, Nelson, The White Stripes, and Zevon are first time nominees. Five artists will be selected by fan vote to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. Fans can vote for their favorite artists online over at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum in Cleveland through April 20th. This year's inductees will be taking play, uh, uh, announce, will be announced in May with the induction ceremony to take place in the fall. Rock and Roll High Hall of Fame founder, Chairman John Scowl, said in a press release, this remarkable list of nominees reflect the diverse artists and music that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame honors and celebrates. These artists have created their own sound that have impacted generations and influenced countless others to, that have forward, followed in their footsteps. Artists eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame must have released their first single 25 years or more before induction. And that is the Entertainment Report for Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.